Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some DAX, we've got some Power Query, and something new for Paginated Reports. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Alberto Ferrari's got a blog post talking about how to use DAX to get the correct sum of values in the total. So this could be a problem if you are using measures in something like a table or really any visual, but if you're trying to calculate totals, that may not add up to what you expected actually coming off of the table values. And so this blog post walks through how to actually consider what the value will be from a total perspective and understanding the grains of when you're actually doing that sum. So if you're new to DAX or you're just not familiar with how this works from a visual perspective on the Power BI side, definitely take a look at this blog post and see how you can actually create your DAX in a way to get the correct value from a total line. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at Power Query and how much memory it actually consumes and what you can do to maybe affect that size in memory. The actual mashup container from a Power Query perspective is limited to 256 meg of RAM from an in actual physical memory perspective. It can actually be larger from a total committed size, but that includes what's been paged out to disk. I know it's a little nerdy, but Chris walks through how to actually see this in action and also how you can change this from a data flows perspective if you're using it against a dedicated capacity like premium. From a Power BI premium perspective, in the data flows configuration, you can actually set what that container size is. So this means you can tell it to actually use more memory than that 256 meg limit. From a shared capacity perspective, or just, you know, in general Power BI, you're still gonna be capped at that 256 meg because, you know, the service doesn't wanna be overtaken by potential queries that are running on the system. But from a Power BI premium perspective, it's your dedicated capacity. And so if you wanna bump that up, you can. And Chris walks through how you can actually do that. So if this is something you're interested, if you're using Power BI premium and data flows, check out this blog post to see what you can actually accomplish from a refresh perspective and maybe improve performance a little bit. Ken Poles from Excel Gurus got a blog post looking at fiscal calendars, but not just fiscal calendars, fiscal Saturday calendars. So this means that your end of month will end on the last Saturday of the month. And so how do you actually calculate that and create a date table that accomplishes that? Ken walks through in his blog post how you can actually do that using Power Query. The example he uses is inside of Excel, but you can easily do this inside of Power BI as well from a Power Query perspective. And based on how he's actually calculating this, you could even take that further and do it from a DAX perspective as well and create that calendar from either DAX or Power Query and just understand how to actually do that calculation to make sure that your fiscal month ends on a Saturday. So if you're interested in creating date tables and have a specific need for a fiscal Saturday calendar, check out this blog post, Ken's got you covered. If you're using Azure Analysis Services along with live connections from Power BI, there is a new governance setting that can help you with regards to actual refreshes of a dashboard. From a dashboard tile perspective, by default, when we upload a Power BI report to the service and we create a dashboard, the tile refresh defaults to one hour. You can adjust this setting from the dashboard settings, but in general, it's always gonna kick off on a scheduled basis. Now, this can result in potential performance problems, especially if we have a lot of dashboards going against that, and it can result in a lot of queries going to your data set. If this is a live connection to Azure Analysis Services, the Azure Analysis Services could see that load on there and result in potential performance problems because it's having to satisfy those additional queries. And so there's a new governance setting from the Azure Analysis Services side, which will override whatever was set inside of Power BI itself. This setting is called Client Cache Refresh Policy. And the setting is specifically set from the Azure Analysis Services side, so you would have to connect with Management Studio, go to the properties of the server, and then that setting would be available. You could also adjust it 
from issuing an XMLA query. And that also means that once Power BI's XMLA endpoint for write capabilities is exposed, that will also be available from a Power BI dataset perspective. But if you're using Azure Analysis Services and you wanna control when that refresh of the dashboard tiles actually occurs, you can set this setting on the server and then the dashboard will be updated whenever new data is actually available instead of on a timed scheduled perspective. So it's a great way to improve some performance items on Azure Analysis Services. To get more details, check out the links down in the comments below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup and some bonus items, so go check it out. Email subscriptions are now available for paginated reports inside of Power BI. This is an awesome addition from a paginated perspective inside of Power BI, which allows you to set those email subscriptions, set the body, set the header, and when it kicks off, it will send you a PDF of the report attached to the email. Chris mentions in the blog that it will come at a later point of the ability to select what the output is, so not just PDF, but you could do PowerPoint or Excel or things of that nature. And then he also talks about what's coming in the months ahead in terms of parameter support and whatnot. If you're using Paginator Reports, check out this blog post, take a look at the new feature and take advantage of email subscriptions. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What did you like this last week? Maybe it was something I covered, maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.